I think they're going to crown the king and and make BlackRock the official uh, first Bitcoin ETF. You know, there's all this stuff about they're going to do them all at once. Maybe, maybe they're going to do them sequentially. We'll we'll see. Um, but BlackRock's definitely going to be one of them. If they're not the only one, they'll definitely be one of them. And the amount of money that's going to shift from these proxies into the Bitcoin ETF, just kind of like, you know, you bought G, people bought GBTC and they're like, why am I paying 2% for holding Bitcoin? Like, why? Well, because it's the only way, if, if you wanted it in your brokerage account or your IRA, that was the only, I guess there were some IRA services, but if you wanted it in a brokerage account, the only way was to own this trust. Investment management firms and stock exchanges in the United States engaged in discussions with the Securities and Exchange Commission on Friday regarding final wording changes for spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds. This development is seen as a potential milestone that could result in the approval of such funds for the first time as early as next week, according to sources familiar with the matter. During these discussions, issuers held talks with SEC officials concerning the S-1 prospectus documents, which are mandatory submissions for approval by every exchange traded fund. Executives and representatives from five firms, who opted to remain anonymous due to the confidentiality of the ongoing negotiations, confirmed the deliberations. Mark Yusko weighed in on the potential impact of Bitcoin ETFs, particularly on companies like MicroStrategy. He speculated on how the introduction of Bitcoin ETFs might redirect capital from existing investment vehicles such as the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust towards these new ETFs. According to Yusko, this shift could have significant implications for companies heavily invested in Bitcoin, like MicroStrategy. While MicroStrategy may benefit from the increasing price of Bitcoin, Yusko suggests that the premium currently enjoyed by the company might diminish as capital flows towards these ETFs. Please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to drop your comment and observations in the comment section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. And if you want to own direct ownership, even like BITO and, and the others were futures, they weren't direct spot ownership. And MicroStrategy is you know, a Bitcoin bank bolted on to a kind of money losing software company. Um, so it really is a Bitcoin bank at this point. And the reason it outperformed not only from this proxy phenomenon, but also they have a little bit of leverage, not a huge amount of leverage, but, you know, Michael can go borrow money back when he borrowed the first tranche at zero interest rates. It's a pretty good deal. And buy Bitcoin. Now, he looked really stupid. For a, a long time, people are like, oh, he's going to get a margin call. He's going to go to zero because if you borrow money and buy an asset that goes down, that's a bad outcome. Now, it's only a bad outcome if the loan can get called. And everybody's like, oh, well, his loan's going to get called. Nope, never got called. Came really close. I mean, came really close, but loan never got called, never got the margin call. And um, you know, now he's looking really smart and I guess he's he's buying more. So- do you think some of those things are absolutely going to see less? Now, you take something like Coinbase, that's a that's a toss-up because while people will certainly move from Coinbase into the ETF, the ETFs, many of them are going to settle in custody inside Coinbase, and so they're going to make some, some additional profits. Now, there's one, I guess there's one guy last night who issued some reports saying, oh, but you're overstating how much that's going to be. And this stock's going down by 67%. I'm like, dude, really? Come on, do some math with me. Because while that's happening, you're, you're not going to make as much as some people think, fine. But what's going to happen to the price when we have both a supply shock, which is coming the end of April, and a demand shock, which is coming on Monday? Price is going up. And price is probably going to go up a lot. And so that's going to be very profitable. If you go back and look at, at Coinbase profits from trading uh, in the last bull cycle, it's a good thing. Mark Yusko shifts the discussion into a more focused analysis of micro strategy under the leadership of Michael Saylor. Yusko draws a compelling parallel between Saylor's strategy at micro strategy and the legendary investment approach of Warren Buffett with Berkshire Hathaway. He expresses admiration for Saylor's ability to utilize the company's balance sheet to make significant investments in Bitcoin, reminiscent of Buffett's strategy of employing stable cash flows for long-term investments. This comparison is particularly intriguing as it contextualizes Saylor's aggressive Bitcoin investment strategy within the framework of traditional and time-tested investment philosophies. Returning to the video, 
Mark reviews the potential impact of the ETF on MicroStrategy. While acknowledging Michael Saylor's capacity to swiftly transition from 0 to 100, given his past achievements, Yusko emphasizes the significance of this analysis in understanding the full effect of the ETF on MicroStrategy. I think it does okay because it'll be a huge beneficiary of, of the rising price, but that premium will get, will get sucked out. And so there'll be, it's kind of how I feel about the first days of the ETF approval. If capital I, capital F, if GBTC is not approved, right? If they stick it to Barry and Michael and don't, give them the approval to convert to an ETF, all 90%, some, some huge amount of the money of that $25 billion in GBTC is leaving. It's just, it's going to move and it's going to be instantaneous. So that would be a, a, a that would be very disappointing to the market because the market would be like, well, why isn't, why isn't the price going to the moon? Why aren't your socks right? Well, because look, I think, couple billion, maybe as much as 3 billion comes in on Monday, big number. If all that is, is converting out of GBTC into these, you know, IBTC or whatever gets approved, then net net, you're not going to have a bunch of, of upward pressure. That would be a big difference. Now, long-term, I don't think it matters. I think long-term there's 300 billion that's coming into this market uh, and that's a 1% allocation. That's not even a 2 or 3 or 4%. That's just 1. So I think it's a monster supply, I mean, demand shock. But I think I think MicroStrategy will, will be good, but not parabolic. Like, people just, it's, it's amazing, right? When things are going down, they extrapolate that it's going down forever. It's going to zero. Probably getting to a point where you should be a buyer, not a seller, right? And we've talked about this when things go on sale and in markets, people run out, of the, run out of the store, like just stay in the store and buy the stuff that goes on sale. So when it was going down and, and the discount, it was already trading at a discount to the, to the assets on its balance sheet, then you probably should have been a, a buyer. Now, when it's trading at a significant premium, because there's a, a hashtag I have, insiders don't sell at bottom. If an insider of a company is selling their stock, they know more than you. They don't sell when it's undervalued, right? We had this thing when I worked at the university, when people would give a gift to the university, we'd sell it immediately. And, and I always said, we should run a hedge fund that just shorted all those stocks. Because if you're giving a gift of an appreciated asset, you're not given the one that you think is going up more. You're given the one that you think is topped out and you can't unload it fast enough. If, if Michael's selling shares to buy more Bitcoin personally, it's because he sees the writing on the wall that the valuation of that business <laughs> is extreme. It's like all the cloud companies, all the software companies are wildly overvalued on a price to earnings ratio. So, but he's, he's a great arbitrageur. He really is. Now, you could argue that, well, maybe he gets on the wrong side of the, the arbitrage, whatever. But he is a great arbitrageur, and he and he's done this multiple times. People forget this is not the first time Michael Saylor has reinvented MicroStrategy and pumped the stock to the moon. Multiple issuers anticipate final approval for S1 filings by late Tuesday or Wednesday, revealing discussions with the Securities and Exchange Commission on Friday. The SEC sought minor changes, prompting some asset managers to update their filings to disclose fees or market maker identities for their ETFs. Updates are expected by 8 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday, potentially becoming public that day. Regulators, working with exchanges, finalized 19 b filings outlining rule changes necessary for spot Bitcoin ETF launches. Issuers meeting end-of-year filing revision deadlines may receive approval to launch by January 10, particularly for the AR21 shares ETF. Several well-known asset managers, including BlackRock and Fidelity, submitted applications for spot Bitcoin ETFs last year. In an unusual move, the SEC requested issuers aiming to launch next week to prepare written requests to accelerate the effective date for their ETFs. The SEC is considering a formal vote on 19 b rule changes, expected next week, instead of the typical informal discussion on timing. As speculation peaks ahead of the January 10th deadline, Anthony Scaramucci and Bloomberg intelligence analysts express bullish sentiments, 
and Poly Market's betting platform heavily favors approval by January 15. Despite widespread optimism, a recent Bitwise survey reveals less than half of advisors expect a spot Bitcoin ETF in 2024, with only 39% expressing optimism about approval this year. This division within the crypto community is mirrored in various perspectives on the likelihood of approval or denial, adding uncertainty to the overall sentiment leading up to the SEC's decision. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.